Well, uh, now we're going to talk about the topic of uh, imperfect markets. Uh, as we know, there are four different types of market structures. Uh, one is uh, perfect competition, which we already discussed in another video. Uh, the other one is a monopoly, uh, which we already which we already uh, discussed in another video. So these two uh, port apart, apart cases, polar part cases, or very extreme cases we discussed uh, like a perfect competition or a monopoly. Now, in between these two, there are two markets, which we call them as a uh, hybrid markets. Hybrid having the characteristics of uh, competition as well as having a, uh, some characteristics of a monopoly. Uh, so these two uh, hybrid type of markets, we're gonna discuss in this chapter and we call them as all together as imperfect competition. One is uh, monopolistic competition. Uh, monopolistic competition having some characteristics from no monopoly as the name is reflecting and some characteristics from a competition as uh, as the name is reflecting it's a combination of monopolistic competition uh, the second uh, the second uh, market structure what we're going to discuss in this chapter is uh, oligopoly and oligopoly is a very special type of market structure in which we see that very few firms are operating. And when very few firms are operating, uh, they are facing a one challenge uh, of their own cost structures and all uh, on, own prices. But uh, at the same time, they have to keep it in mind the their rivals actions, their rivals or their competitors actions, whether they are charging, what price they are charging, whether they are in a competition, uh, if they want to spend money for advertisement, what is their reactions or what, what is their strategy. So uh, in that particular type of uh, market, which is oligopoly, uh, the, uh, the manager of the firm should have to think strategically uh, that if I do this, uh, if I increase the price or decrease the price or spend money for research or advertisement or if I increase the production or decrease the production. So these all decisions are strategic decisions, not only based on your own uh, uh, fundamentals, but also you have to keep it in mind the action, reactions of your competitors, reactions of your rivals. So that's the uh, difference between oligopoly and a monopolistic competition. Let's start, uh, share with you uh, the screen of my uh, lecture slides. So uh, imperfect competition and strategic behavior. So that's the name of our uh, topic. And uh, now we first focus on uh, monopolistic competition and then we will talk about oligopoly in which we have to think like a strategically. Uh, between the two extremes, as I mentioned, industries uh, with many small firms, uh, Canada's output is largely produced in industries where the firms are small relative to the size of the industry. So the, one thing is that uh, the industry has some size and, uh, and that size is uh, comprised of many small uh, firms. And that's what we call it as a small firms in a large industry. Uh, and there's another situation the, uh, uh, that uh, large firms operating in a uh, um, a few large firms are operating in an industry. That's another scenario. So the perfectly competitive models explain the behavior of an individual's price taking firms that produce more or less identical products. So that's very important. And that's why it is highlighted here, identical products. Now, identical products means that we cannot differentiate or we cannot uh, make a, a, a dis uh, distinction between uh, or differentiation between the products like wheat farmer is growing. Uh, so if it's the same variety of wheat, we cannot identify which farms is producing it. Uh, same is the case with the eggs, milk, uh, all vegetables, foods, and also uh, we see this in a uh, gas, what we are buying, uh, ga uh, gasoline, what we are buying from a uh, gas station. So uh, these are uh, products which are identical. But the market, what we are talking is monopolistic competition in which the main uh, uh, is that the firm has a degree of power, market power, and how they are uh, exercising or obtaining this market power is through their product differentiation. It means that uh, every firm has its own uh, firm, uh, product, uh, which is different from others. And that's why they have a, some monopoly power or some market power on it. So we can say the theory of monopolistic competition explains why there are many small firms 
but where uh, each firm has some degree of market power. So about one third of Canada's total output is produced in industries dominated by either a single firm or a few large firms. So this is another scenario. Uh, and that's what we call it as a theory of oligopoly. Helps us to understand industries in which there are a small number of large firms, uh, each with a considerable market power because they are uh, having a, a big market share. Uh, and that compete actively with a each other. And the examples of oligopolies are groceries. Like if you look at the grocery markets, very few are people, very few firms are competing with each other. Uh, and if there are different products of uh, like a different names of the stores, uh, but if you uh, look at their uh, ownership structure, so it's only a one company having different products. Life insurance, railways, only two firms are operating in Canada. Uh, and um, uh, aviation industry like airlines, we have just uh, two or three airlines which are operating. So it's, we see that a uh, few large firms are operating in the industry. So industrial con uh, concentration, how we measure this, uh, that the industry is concentrated or not. So there is commonly uh, a common measure is that we figure it out the concentration ratio. Uh, and the most famous one are the uh, four firm concentration ratio. Now, how we do this, we take the uh, top four firms of the industry, top four firms uh, of their sales. We add up the sales of the top four firms and divide the total sales of the industry. So by this way, if we get figures like a 70, 80, 90 or 60%, uh, so we can say that the, that the market is very concentrated only in the hands of ma major portion of the market is only in the hands of very few firms. Uh, but if this ratio is very small, like 10%, 5%, it means that the market is diluted. It's very uh, spreaded among many uh, firms. So uh, uh, the main problem with the, these concentration ratios is that how you define the market. It is important that you have to define the market because uh, some products are within the market, like a pharmaceutical industry. And there's a lot of different variations, like some are drug saving, uh, life saving drugs, uh, but some are just a cosmetic drugs or entertainment drugs. So that's we have to differentiate uh, when we are talking about the uh, market. Now, if we look at the data uh, regarding the uh, Canadian uh, manufacturing industry. So we see that uh, petroleum and coal uh, industry is highly concentrated. You see about 70% uh, uh, is owned by just four few firms, uh, four, uh, four firms, uh, and then beverage and tobacco, and then transportation equipment, primary metals, chemicals, papers. And when we go down the line, we see that uh, fabrication or clothing and machinery, uh, these are small firms, then their concentration ratios are very low. So as the name of the topic is imperfect computation, so the market structure we are now going to study are called imperfect competitive uh, or imperfect competition. The word competitive emphasizes that we are not dealing with monopoly. Uh, the word imperfect emphasizes that we are not dealing with the perfect competition. So in which firms are price takers? So that's as why uh, that's why I mentioned in the beginning that this is a hybrid hybrid type of uh, markets. So what are the characteristics that are typically of imperfect competition firms? Uh, firms differentiate their product. That's a very basic difference between a competitive market and imperfect competitive market. Uh, firm decide the characteristics of a new product uh, to design and sell, and firms sell an array of differentiated products, uh, no two of which are identical. Like for example, uh, very commonly uh, we see uh, like, Tim Horton uh, is selling coffee uh, and also Starbucks is also selling coffees, uh, but they are charging different prices. The reason is that they think that their coffee is different than the other one's coffee. And some people are very uh, uh, having a very special taste for those products. So they only go for the, that even they have to pay a high price for it. So that's a different a differentiator problem. Although in general, the coffee is coffee, uh, but St Tim, Berg, uh, uh, Tim uh, Horton coffee and Starbucks coffees are differentiated. We can differentiate. Uh, so differentiated uh, product is a group of a product similar enough to be called the same product. Like I gave you an example of a coffee, but si dissimilar enough that all of them do not have to be sold at the same price. So that's a perfect definition and a perfect example of a uh, differentiated product. Uh, although we use uh, toothpaste of a different uh, brands, different names, different characteristics. So these are all charging different prices. The reason is, although they are toothpaste, 
but they are similar enough that we can say that these are toothpaste, but they are dissimilar enough that we are all ready to pay different prices for those. So this is the way that we differentiate the product. So whenever firms' uh, products are not identical, each must decide it on a price to set. So when the products are differentiated, it means the firm like a Starbucks has a monopoly of over selling their own coffee, their own coffee. So that's that's the way. Uh, uh, they have a market power to determine their price. So firm that choose their prices are said to be price setters. So in the uh, in a monopolistically competitive market, the firms are price setters. So they set their prices. Uh, a firm price setter is a firm that faces a downward sloping. So very similar to the monopoly, they are facing downward sloping uh, demand curve. And it is the firms that who is deciding, okay, if we produce this much quantity, we are able to charge this much price, uh, just like a monopoly. So uh, it chooses the price to set. So imperfectly competitive firms typically engage in a behavior that what is now that's a, that's a very uh, important thing to mention here is that in a imperfectly competitive market, uh, like a monopolistic competition, uh, the advertisement has a very big role, very big role uh, to play because uh, uh, we need to communicate, uh, we need to convince, we need to uh, uh, make it um, uh, the mind of our consumers uh, that my product is better than others. So for that reason, we need advertisement. Advertisement through TV commercials, advertisement through uh, social media, advertisement through magazines and all these uh, brochures and all these uh, handouts, all these things, what we are doing, what is objective to convince, to motivate, to uh, make the mind of the consumer that this product in this particular price is, is better than any other product. So this is what we need to advertise. Now, advertisement has a uh, some social cost as well. Like uh, advertisement motivate the people to buy the things which they really don't need. Uh, so that's a disadvantage of advertisement. Or we can say that it's a hindsight of advertisement, uh, that people spend money which they don't need to spend. Uh, the second uh, point for advertisement is uh, like uh, the cost increase because the, the, the firms... Uh, when they spend money, uh, and we know that it's a, it's a multi-billion industry advertisement, uh, making an advertisements, publishing or uh, telecasting and all these things. Uh, so what? who is paying that cost? The consumer is paying that cost. And very commonly observed that if you go to the store, like a superstore, you see the yellow uh, pack uh, uh, products. Uh, those are called as no-name products. The no-name products means that there is no advertisement. And that's why their prices are lower as compared to with the branded names. So that's a one uh, also the, the side effects or a negative side effects of advertisement is that the consumer has to bear the cost. Uh, in some countries nowadays, uh, the, uh, there are many organizations who started this uh, move that we want to sell the uh, medicines with the generic names because these pharmaceutical companies are charging very high prices for their products, although the, even the salts are very same. So that's the way uh, that uh, advertisement has a negative effect. But advertisement also playing a very positive impact as well. Like uh, uh, if there is no advertisement, how do you uh, how do you know that there's a new product with these characteristics and all these things? So it's a it's a mechanism of providing information or uh, update the knowledge of the consumer. So that's the one. The second very important element of advertisement is that uh, it is going to signal the consumer. Like those firms who are spending millions of dollars on their advertisement, it means the consumer has to believe that why they are spending uh, this much money on advertisement if their product is not good. Because if you are not producing a good product and you are spending millions of dollars on advertisement, a consumer is going to buy one time, but the second time is not going to buy because the quality is poor. So, the, so we can infer from this that uh, the uh, firms go only for a, a huge uh, investment in advertisement if their products are of a good quality, if their products are of a uh, better quality. So that's uh, one thing. And we also know that these brands and these uh, advertisement uh, gives us a, an important signal as well. Like if you uh, have to make a decision between a, a local restaurant without any knowledge about that uh, and a McDonald's, so you know very well that what you're going to get it in McDonald's, but you don't know exactly what you 
you're going to get it in a local restaurant without any uh, information. So that's the way that it's going to give us also the uh, the the uh, the signal for quality and uh, these aspects. Uh, so uh, these are the things that, uh, and advertisement is purely related to uh, the monopolistic competition or imperfect competition. Uh, there is no um, uh, advertisement for uh, for the uh, products in which uh, there is no differentiation uh, or in a perfectly competitive market, there is no advertisement. You never see any farmer's advertisement for, uh, for their uh, meat or for their uh, produce. So this is the way that uh, it works. And so engage a variety of forms of non-price competition, such as offering competitive standards of quality and product guarantees may engage in activities that appear to be assigned to hinder the entry of new firms. Now, these monopolistically competitive firms also uh, work in a way that they hinder the uh, entrance or entry of a new firm so that uh, their businesses are not uh, uh, taken away or uh, steal uh, by the new entrant. So that's the way uh, they work that they spend and this is the reason that uh, these firms are spending millions of dollars on advertisement uh, now with this advertisement uh, a no new firm can enter and uh, uh, enter into the uh, business uh, without spending so much money equal to that uh, advertisement so by this way there is always a, a hindrance for new firms and we observe this in in a beverage industry like Coca-Cola and Pepsi they own mostly 80 percent of the business of the world software drinks uh and uh how they they spend millions of dollars of that and and no new firm can compete with that uh in in the spending of uh for advertisement uh, so two in between market structures we now go into more details and make a distinction between industries with the large so we we just discuss uh the monopolistic competition in which the firms have a, some monopoly power because their products are differentiated. So in, in how much they have to produce uh, and at what price they're going to sell, they behave like a monopoly. So there is no need to repeat that again. Uh, they, uh, they equate the minor revenue is equal to marginal cost and then determine the price based on downward sloping demand curve. Uh, now, the, 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 the second um, uh, imperfect market uh, is uh, that in which uh, large number of small firms and industries with a small number of large firms, which we call it as an oligopoly. So we are focusing now with a small number of large firms. So the key difference between these two market structures is the most of strategic behavior displayed by the firm, displayed by the, so strategic behavior that is uh, important. And so in the second part, we talk, we're going to talk about uh, the oligopoly market uh, in detail. So stay tuned.